All right, so here we are in Fusion 360. Um, I tried shooting a video, it didn't really come across well, but I used the mobile app uh, to actually create this subfolder within my Grips and Scales uh, project and uh, it let me have a place to drop this photo. And I tried dropping a couple others, but they didn't upload. What I wanted to do, I have a linear field of view mode on my GoPro. I wanted to use that to try to get a straight on image with less distortion. It turned out that my cell phone uh, did a better job. So let's take a look at that. And it's going to open up in Chrome here. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah. So you can see a little bit of, uh, I guess, a perspective here inside the jaws. Uh, but the kind of center of focus, this uh, knife, all the holes look good. Uh, close to round. I, I, it was actually a lot of work to try and get the shadow out of it. I'm not set up to do that right, but I'm totally uh, convinced this is going to be enough to work off of, get some good geometry. So let's pop back over to, uh, to Fusion 360 and uh, see what it is we need to do over here to uh, make, that, uh, make that happen. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, uh, create a sketch off of a plane. Now, um, I, I like to tie things off the origin, um, but uh, that's 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 how I work. And then I think that I want to start with a, uh, a two-point rectangle. I may be getting this out of order, but I think I want to do it like uh, four inches uh, by uh, two inches. And it <clears throat> Actually, I, I may not need that for, um, let's see what happened here. I may not need that for an attached canvas, so forget that I did that. Let's look at uh, attached canvas. And then the image, I'm going to select image. It's not going to be from the computer. Hmm. That's interesting. So this is everything on my, it automatically wants to look on my PC. Um, so in the face, okay, so I can select a plane. There's no need to, there's no need to create a sketch previously. I think I have some experience with Autodesk Inventor as well. And I think that they make you, uh, make some kind of a, a, a rough sketch, uh, to stick the image to, um, Hmm. So I've selected a face, um, and What's really cool is you can go in later and uh, edit the opacity and basically the transparency of that image so that you can both work with it, see it, but then also see through it as you're creating sketch geometry. That's a big, that's a big deal. Um, so if I select image, it's going to look on this PC, A360 drive. Hmm. That, that's actually pretty annoying. Um, that the whole purpose of putting it on the uploading it mobile was so that hmm now that's kind of annoying because then I have to like email it to myself or hook it up to USB and grab it. Uh, it's actually it's actually more work to do it that way. So let me take a look. I'll I'll pause this and see if I can figure it out and come back. Okay, so I sorted it out. Um, I had to go to the web browser and um, where I displayed this image from the. Uh, uh, the cloud, download it, and then select it from my PC, which is pretty crazy because that kind of defeats the purpose of me putting them uh, side by side in the in the folder here. Maybe there's something I don't understand. Uh, but anyway, at, at any rate, here we have an image. We have some calipers displaying an absolute dimension point to point. We've got some holes. I've taken note that those are 250. So regardless of what uh, reference geometry you're going to get here and then snap, not snapping, but drawing a circle, on those, they're all going to be what, one quarter of an inch. Um, and let's see. So the next steps are going to be to, um, I, oh, you have to just hit OK, right? And then it puts it in with the sketches. It has created a sketch. Um, and then it's under canvas, excuse me. So uh, calibrate. That is what we care about. So we want to zoom in and, uh, Good resolution uh, photo here, and uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure how much of a difference it makes exactly, but 
see how these are, you, they look tapered because you can see inside of the jaws. I'm turning it like I'm going to look. Uh, but uh, yeah, you, so I want to grab the point. I also to make sure that I don't have any uh, cosine error here measuring along the line. What I want to do is grab tip to tip on these calipers. And they are set at 5 inches exactly. So this is obviously way off. So this would actually be 5 point and hit enter. Okay, so here we are. This knife uh, in geometry should be really close to scale. So um, C for circle. And I'm going to zoom in. And like I said, I know all these holes are 250. And uh, it's trying to snap with some points, which I'm not exactly thrilled about. Uh, that's a setting. Oh, look at that. 250, 258. Uh, that's that's within from a photo from my phone. That's uh, uh, totally, totally awesome. So I'll kind of justify this and scoot it to where it's, you know, where I think I want, where I think I want it to be without snapping. And then uh, I can click fix unfix. Now, typically, uh, in a solid modeling environment, you know, my inclination is going to be to go ahead and uh, pop a dimension, but there's no dimensions that exist on this. I can measure where they are, and I can work out where they are, but, but you know, no three holes are in line. There's no point in doing that. It's better to uh, put it where it needs to be, and I have a plan for accounting for any mismatch later on. So I'll uh, go ahead and speed up and pop the rest. Okay, so at this point I've uh, knocked all the circles in there and rather than giving them many dimensions locationally, I've just constrained their diameters or dimensioned their diameters and they're all tied to this dimension. So if I edit this dimension and make it uh, 0.3, uh, they'll all have the same. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. They should all be 0.3, but the Fusion has lost its mind for a minute here. Um, so we'll control Z and go back. And these all represent uh, correctly. Maybe it's because the geometry is fixed. I bet you that that's exactly what it is. So uh, it doesn't understand that I just want to fix the center points. It believes that this whole circle and everything needs to stay exactly in place. So, okay, not Fusion's fault, mine. Uh, but that's why it didn't want to behave the way I expected. But I, I, I'm kind of, I may tie down these dimensionally because I do want to be able to edit that dimension. Um, but maybe it doesn't matter. I can do that in cam. I can leave some stock with the uh, with the end bill I choose. Okay, so 
enough about that. The next thing I want to do is a spline. I have drawn maybe three splines ever. Um, so this seems like a good project to start on, and uh, let's see what it looks like. Okay, so we want to choose some of the natural bend points, like, uh, like around here seems to be a slight peak, and then around, maybe around here as well. Definitely about here. Oh, this contour around. Okay, this is starting to make a little bit of sense. It's definitely in the realm of... Uh, more so in the realm of uh, like artwork than uh, CAD design that I would say that I'm I'm used to. So that's a little bit high there, but we can straighten that out. This guy. Okay, so I'll go to this inside point and see if we can bend this the way that we need to. Not going to be enough. Okay, we'll see if we can add a point there. That's not too bad. I think I'm ruining this. <laughs> uh, folks who draw splines. All day long probably know exactly what I'm doing wrong here okay so close flying curve hmm that's not what I wanted to do. You know what I'm going to try and do is I want to uh, just make an arc, three point arc, because this does break pretty solid. But you know what? Does it snap? Yeah, it'll snap here because this is actually what I what I really want to what I want to have here. So I can see by the color change that we have a closed loop. I can extrude this right now, um, but what I need to do is get in here and edit this spline. Okay, so I can move it around too. That's another key thing. Hmm. Let's see. Back up here. And then um, maybe dimension here to there. So I'm not able to do that. Maybe I can um, fix just that corner. Okay, so if I click that and it's changed color so I feel like it's probably fixed yeah okay now I can start pulling on this thing without ruining and changing everything okay so I can move this blind handle up I need to figure out how to change the snap increments I think it's getting a little too touchy on me um, hit point here yep so if you didn't see what I just did, I clicked to insert a fit point, and uh, that's helpful because otherwise I uh, wouldn't have any way to drive this. See, it's snapping uh, significantly further than I want for, for what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I should figure out if that's a base setting that's wrong in Fusion, and maybe I can... Uh, that make my life a little bit easier. Okay, that was a pretty obvious one that I should have remembered. 
when I kicked off Fusion 360, the grid was up and I figured out how to turn it off one time and didn't proceed beyond that. What I'm going to do is turn off Snap to Grid because even though I can't see it, uh, the sketch environment is uh, working off of that grid and it's, and it's trying to pick a point. So let's see if this is just a little bit more tolerable. Look at how fluid that is now. So that's a big deal for me. Wow. And uh, I kind of need a harder point right here. Uh, so I'm going to center that up. And yeah, I'm going to see if I can add insert spline fit point right here. Maybe that's what I want to do here. And you know what? I'm going to pop another one in up here. Hit escape. And so everything affects everything else. Uh, but in general, I think I'm able to move this guy around until it fits. So I probably want to pop a few more in here. And I see actually that that gets tight there and that gets tight there. It's like a, a little spot that it, that it, uh, almost a flat. So I'll fool around with this some more. But yeah, turning off uh, snap points makes uh, working with splines actually possible. Um, I didn't realize they were on because my grid was uh, was hidden. So that's something that's going to help me a lot. Like I say, generally in my type of modeling, you know, it's, it's all parametric. You're not worried about trying to hover or, or scoot things uh, to precision. Uh, all, all that you're actually trying to do is... Um, well, that's not moving. Uh, all you're actually trying to do is uh, go in and, um, and, and add dimensions and put things where they need to be. Okay, so we have a ton of points. Uh, they exist in space where I think that they need to be. Um, and I'm putting them as tight to the line as I can. And I'm, when I machine it, I'm not going to leave it anywhere uh, near that much. I'm going to leave it at probably at least a quarter of a millimeter, uh, ten thousandths of an inch uh, off of the surface, uh, even when it's, uh, I feel like, all the way finished and just uh, sand it to fit, sand it until I just contact. Uh, the steel there, and I think that's going to be my, my very best fit uh, because uh, it's perfect because I try to make this outside curve, you know, I can still miss one of the hole locations and I still want just a little bit of forgiveness uh, versus the outside of the material so I can make these things uh, work out uh, really nice. Okay, so that lets us, we can hit stop sketch, we can turn off the visibility of our canvas, and look, we have just a knife handle, simple as can be.
So I'll hit Q for press pull. And uh, we're going to do something a little bit different here. I'm actually only going to extrude or, or, or move this uh, a very small amount, 10 thousandths of an inch. And what this does for me is uh, it creates, it's going to create a surface to work a mesh off of because I kind of think that I want to make a mesh. I don't know. I may, I may actually go back and edit this. Um, you know what I need to do as soon as I have this body is I want to make this a component. This is going to be the right hand scale looking at the knife like from the back um, just to keep track of that so when I do a mirror operation and it makes a new body uh, it should pop up up there and I'll make that into the scale uh, left hand and then slide it around and uh, pop them both on the same plane facing up but that's uh, that's what I'll do next so I'll edit this extrude and uh, Let's say instead of uh, just the ten thousandths to work a mesh off of, let's see how we can make it look if I want to um, make it into, say, three eighths of an inch. Let's say that'd be three quarter. That's too much. Let's see, uh, uh, 0.3 inches just for something simple. And I'll click OK. So I won't be able to do this nice sweeping contours, but I could do something as simple as uh, uh, put a, a fillet on there. Control to select the entire loop and then 0 0.125 what does that look like I mean that's that's pretty cool it's not what I want but I mean that's pretty cool I can know I can take a form tool and make that contour around uh, instead of using like a ball end mill in the CNC machine to uh, make that shape so that would be pretty quick um, but yeah I think I'm gonna do this for now and I may roll back. I may regret this, but I may roll back and, and turn it into a mesh feature. I, I'm, uh, I'm saying mesh, maybe T-spline. I'm not really that comfortable with T-splines, um, but I can figure them out. Oh, and then also, maybe let's see. If I grab this guy, what does it do? Oh, perfect. I really like that a lot. I mean, that's that's a, that's a scale. That, I actually did in the video here because that's <laughs> that's it. So I'll save this. And then I'll just uh, make a note right hand. Note that it's only been done right hand. So you notice I have the origin uh, visible still. I'm about to use that again. And the next thing I want to do is, uh, is create a, a mirror pattern. And then I don't want to pattern faces, uh, but actually I want to pattern components. Um, but it is a mirror. Mirror plane will be this plane here. Uh, it will not be that plane here. It'll be this plane. Uh, and then the components, the object, and I really like to select it over here and make sure I'm grabbing just what I need to. Okay, so now here I have both sides. And it's not worth worrying about the fact that they're butted up right next to each other because that's not how we're going to machine them. So I can say, okay, go ahead and turn the origin visibility off. And then uh, we should be able to move this guy around. Okay, this is awesome. <laughs> this is the power of Fusion 360 and what it lets you do. Um, I mean, it's insane. Uh, so I could do the same thing if I took the time to make a, a mesh uh, a surface. But this is a nice, quick and dirty. And it looks really nice and uniform. But I can tell you right now, that's going to feel like a kitchen knife in your hand. And, and like, you know, the kind you get at Ross. So... <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to go to assemble, I'm going to make a joint, and then uh, I'm going to click continue, uh, component one, uh, I don't want a rigid group, I want a planer, hmm, I wonder if I should scoot these guys, I think I'm going to scoot these guys ahead of time, okay, so here they are now, and then, um, so in Inventor, I would normally look for a free rotate, and what I want to do is pop these on the same plane. Maybe I can reverse it after I pick the plane. So I'm going to click Assemble, but this time uh, I'm going to click Capture Position, and then I'm going to select Component 1. That's already selected Component 2. 
uh, is this guy, but I want to uh, take this, move to this face. Maybe this is a good kind of a handle to uh, work off of. Um, can I flip it? Yes, haha, <laughs> I can flip it. Okay, so then what I can do, um, I think component number one, I want to go back and uh, component one, I want to select it here. That's going to tie these guys together somewhat symmetric. Okay, we're starting to look pretty good. So um, offset in this is X. Okay, good. Um, I think if I want to offset in X, two inches is fine. Uh, I can also rotate. Um, I can rotate this way, which I think is what I want to do. And then uh, make that an even 180, just to say I did. Um, and then I can see that, okay, I've got plenty of room to get. And I'm thinking about using stock and using tabs, right? So I'm trying to visualize how much material needs to live in between here. Uh, it doesn't need to be, uh, I guess, two inches center to center from these holes, I guess is what they're, they're saying it is. So uh, 1.2, that's too little, so 1.5. Uh, let's say 1.65. Uh, Pick some nice nominal inch numbers there. Why not? Um, and uh, I, I think I think that's going to work out pretty good. So I can click OK at this point. I have two scales. And what's great is I can go as far forward as I want to without screwing everything up. Because I can roll back here. And I'm getting some orange here. I wonder what that means. I don't know. Um... Uh, I can roll back, make edits, uh, and then uh, roll forward and be and be right back on track. And that just really um, is a cool feature of uh, of most CAD systems, but I think Fusion does it really well. Um, so I'm in this environment. I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to call it uh, uh, right hand. Uh, let's see. Uh, Right hand, left hand. That'll remind me that at this point, both have been made. Uh, this is the, the version. So if I screw something up at this point, I can roll back to a couple different, um, couple different options here. So I'm going to go to Cam, and then uh, click Setup. And uh, I have some default set in my stock to cause it to behave a little bit better. Um, I prefer that it snaps to just enough stock to fit the part. And then I'm going to look at these uh, sizes here. Uh, so I can get this out of a 6x6 six six piece, which is probably the size piece that I might uh, be able to scrounge up or uh, get from a local place in town. I forgot to mention there's a really cool company called uh, VZ Grips here in Tallahassee. And they make um, like uh, pistol grips and knife scales and stuff. And they, they sell them all over the world. Um, and they're really high end. Uh, they all, from time to time will sell uh, drops and little pieces of material and stuff. Uh, so I might uh, go knock on their door and see what they have. So um, stock side offset. I think I'm going to do a fixed size box, and I'm going to tell it, look, it's six inches. Let's count on getting a six inch piece, and then uh, a six by six. And then I can plan to slide it to one side or the other. That seems about right. That gives me room to put some toe clamps over here and here, and maybe sneak something in there or a screw through to a subplate. And grab the thing and then height. Uh, you remember, I extruded it to 0.3. Um, uh, the stuff I'm probably going to get, it's going to work out to 0.375 inches or just shy of uh, 10 millimeters, like nine and a half millimeters. Um, and the model position, I'm going to center everything up. That seems to make the most sense right now. Uh, notice that my X, Y, and Z are acceptable. I mean, that's good. There's, there's no reason I need to. Uh, change that at all. I think I would uh, put a toe plate left and right, and uh, that would let me get um, get in the machine uh, really good. Let's see here. Um, there's nothing else that I need to fool with here, and a lot of times if you're looking for things to click and set up, the best thing to click is OK, save it here, and then open it and edit it some more, because if you mess something up or if you accidentally click cancel at the end, uh, you can be up a creek and have to, have to start over. Same thing is true for many 3D uh, toolpaths. Now, one of my frustrations is that Fusion does not support form tools at this time, and I think that they did previously. I'm not really sure what's going on there, 
I know I can kind of bootleg it if I just want to use a form tool to go around these uh, these contours. Um, but uh, anyway, let's get into some cam and see what it's going to take to um, to uh, cut these out. So the first thing I want to pick is a 2D contour. Um, it's not worth trying to do an adaptive or anything like that because I'm going to leave these parts in the stock. I'm not going to try and cut all this stock away. Um, if I was doing a bunch of these or something, I might try to uh, drill the holes and then drop some some parts in there. So uh, speaking of drilling, that's probably the first thing I should do. What I want to do is select a tool, and I have a tool library that matches what we have at work, and it just seems to be a good collection. So I'm going to look under uh, local, and this uh, uh, VF6. Um, so I have a uh, one quarter spot drill, and um, I think I'm going to go with it for now. I probably need to drill it smaller than one quarter, and then for selections, of course, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to select anything the same diameter. And here we have everything selected. Um, as far as heights, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to drill the tip through the bottom and then uh, give it an additional uh, 20 thousandths. I'm going to make sure I have a nice sacrificial piece of material underneath here, either a piece of the same or a piece of plastic or something like that. We actually got a bunch of really cool sacrificial material for free um, from a company in town. And actually, now that I think about it, I may use some of that material to make these scales out of at least a couple versions, make sure I'm happy with the um, shape of them. Okay, so we have a drill cycle. It's just a, a G81. It's going to go straight down. It's not deep enough. Well, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll do um, deep drilling full retract just to make sure we get some coolant in there. But um, I'm totally going to go uh, an eighth of an inch deep here. <clears throat> And we'll simulate that just to be sure that it's everything I expect it to be. I want to see the stock. And um, uh, let's move it to um, transparent. Make sure we're coming all the way through here. That looks pretty good. Ah, I see a problem though. So I've decided to put my stock centered, not just X and Y, but Z. I need to go back and change that in my setup. We'll edit it and we'll say um, in our stock. And this is something where I've changed the default um, in Z model position center. So looking along the Z axis here, it's dropping this solid model directly in between the upper and lower faces of the stock. So what I'm interested in doing is offset from bottom. And um, oh, I didn't, I didn't do it yet. Well, now I can show you. So it's showing that there's an offset of 0.0375. Now, where did that come from? Well, that is a carryover from, let me turn it to the front view here. That is a carryover from uh, the calculated distance uh, remaining after, so uh, whatever the thickness is versus the stock that we have. Um, so what Fusion lets you do, and actually all the HSM products, lets you edit an expression. Um, and it, I don't actually exactly understand this, but basically what it's doing is it's looking at the um, uh, difference between the model and the stock, and it's dividing it in half. The default that I like is zero. And you know what I'm going to do is make that... Make default. And I have this on uh, Inventor HSM at work, and I like it. Um, it for me, if I'm telling... A model to offset from a certain surface of the stock versus centered I don't really want it to tell me what the centered number was I'm, I'm going to be putting a value in there and uh, nine times out of ten that value is 0 0.000 inches so having it default to zero inches makes a lot of sense but it's a little bit of a nuisance when you you change a setting and nothing moves so <clears throat> that's why I like to put that at zero okay so our toolpath for the drilling shows is broken. You can still see a simulation of what was happening. Happening, uh, generate, and the only thing that's going to change is that it will go um, a little bit deeper now because it's going to go uh, through the hole. And let's see, this G54 is the top of the stock, so we have uh, increased our depth a little bit. We'll simulate this, and uh, I'll turn the stock off of transparent and just make sure. Look, we have full diameter all the way through. So that's going to be handy. 
So what this will let me do if I decide that I want to, I'll be ready to maybe um, uh, drill and tap some screw holes underneath and, and actually I can hold these scales by a couple of these holes if I want to um, so that I can uh, contour the outer profile without using any tabs. But I think, I think I'm going to go for some tabs. So uh, let's see, also face. Let's get the face off. Select uh, probably this half inch end mill, number eight is a good choice. Um, and just leave the feed and speed default, but um, I don't need to cut the whole piece of stock. So uh, stock contours is set to nothing right now, but I'm gonna actually pick, and I wanna grab this bottom loop. Uh, the, this one's probably okay, but this would definitely, um, uh, even though it's anyway, I want to grab I want to grab this uh, these two loops here. If I click OK, it's going to make me a tool path, and I'll see if it's any good here. Okay, so I see a problem right away. I don't like this. I want the long run of uh, the facing to take place. Uh, I don't know in the long axis here. So the way you fix that is to uh, pass direction, and uh, I'm going to give it 90 degrees. So right in the passes tab, you can specify the direction. You can make that uh, 14 degrees if you felt like you wanted to. Um, you, you have a lot of choices. Um, so that's going to take less time because the machine has to change direction uh, uh, much less. So I'm actually going to reorder this. and Let's face it first and then drill it. Um, and uh, also let's uh, put a 2D contour in. So the easiest thing to do is go 2D contour. Let's grab a tool. This uh, tool number four is going to be a quarter inch flat end mill. And uh, again, I'm going to grab actually these same two curves that we identified for the facing, except now I want to cut these contours. So the passes tab, um, not the passes tab, and the heights tab. Uh, bottom height is the selected contour. And if I'm on a nice flat piece of aluminum, uh, what I'm going to tell it is minus 0 0.002 thousandths of an inch, just to make sure it cuts. So I like to cut into the aluminum a little bit and, uh, and, and ensure that we have a full contour. Okay, so this is obviously not going to work for a couple of reasons. And the main one being that uh, we're hitting it full depth at once. Uh, 375, we could, we could do it slotting, but I don't, I don't want to. You have to feed a lot slower the chips. Have trouble evacuating. What I want to do is make it in a couple of depths to cut, and I want to also add tabs. So in this case, I hit OK just to save the toolpath so it won't get deleted if something happens, and then I will uh, go back in here and edit. And uh, tabs are really cool because you can control them a lot of different ways. So here's some defaults. Now this, these defaults are different than what I have in Inventor right now. That's actually pretty good. I think that would hold apart really well. Uh, I tend to like triangular tabs because it just seems to make the toolpath easier. You're not doing a direct vertical plunge, even though this is steeper than you would ramp most end mills. Uh, in a free cutting material like this synthetic, it's fine. You can you can, you can can gouge, you can drill in G10 with a, a free boot end mill. Um, it's, it's not the best for the part or for the end mill, but it, it, it'll do it. It'll be fine. So tab height, I want it a little bit higher than a 16th. So I'll make it, uh, let's say 0.1 for now. Tab width, uh, two, that looks pretty good. Tab distance at two inches. So I can drive these a couple different ways. I can make a sketch and choose points or um, right now I'm at my distance, it's at points and uh, can actually click kind of some points on the model. A lot of times you can find a, uh, a surface, see how it's generating the tab there. But see, this is a curve, so there's no like uh, intersection or hard point to pick. So a lot of times that's not uh, great, but you can draw a sketch and have the visibility on and pick points off of your sketch, which is, which is a big deal. It's, it's really nice because um, you can absolutely put those tabs where you really want them. But what I want to do is go by distance. And uh, two inches looks pretty good, but let's see what uh, 2.5. Maybe that's a little too far apart. I, I plan on sanding this thing anyway, so if leaving some extra tabs in makes the part come out well, um, I'll leave them in there. And you can see the nice little, <laughs> nice little divots or, or uh, ramps here uh, where it's leaving material. 
The other thing I forgot to do was go in here and say multiple depths. I want to say multiple depths. Maximum roughing step, step down is uh, point, uh, 0.2 inches, we'll say for now, just so it has more than one pass. And um, then we will click OK. And uh, I'm pretty happy with that. We'll play through the simulation here. 